Where do you believe the gaps really lie today? What can be the role of technology to try and bridge some of those and amplify the work that's being done? So I'll, I'll put this in two um, directions. So let me answer the second part first, because I actually think, um, you know, I have become a big fan of the government, by the way, just to be clear, because we're partnering in a really amazing way. So, um, yeah. Um, and um, But also that um, there is a common alignment right now, which is really important. There's a gender convergence. And there's a digital equality or, I think, openness that's happened right now, which I think is amazing. In fact, I think India is one of the first countries that is saying they're going to be digitally transparent and a digital first economy in a way that's kind of brilliant. Okay, it's not been done before. And so what does that mean for rural women, however? So as India becomes more and more digitally transformed, the challenge here is that women are still not getting access to those smartphones. They're not getting the internet connectivity. And there's efforts to digitally train them, but they're not getting digital businesses. So if we don't bridge that gap, mm. that's going to be a big problem. Now today, I have a really cool tech platform that helps women get jobs and earn income. But I can only select those women that have smartphones. So why am I only creating a million women entrepreneurs is because the 100 million don't have those phones. And that's a problem in my mind that's first on the digital transformation. Mm. Second piece in my mind is also around then, like the transparency of data and digitization of data. So the more data that we bring into the, in, into the spectrum, there's a lot of challenges, right? Um, data security, data ownership. Um, also, how does one read that data? Yeah. So on, an entre on a woman entrepreneur, now comes to my side, I'm a very feminist woman entrepreneur. So when I look at data, I see it very differently than, unfortunately, my counterparts do. When I see a data point of 300,000 women still asking that their aspiration is to get a toilet in their own home, a Sarkari government guy goes, see, Swatch Bharat. I look at this and I say, why can't I just sell that to Kohler? and tell them that they'll pay $100, and you now have a $300 million opportunity, but make it happen fast. Because this is where markets, and I think business, comes in with a different lens. So somewhere we're trying to understand where that nexus is. Mm. How can we look at a femme first, consumer first, digital experience where we cannot start, we have to start trusting each other, mm to build and bridge that gap that could be exponentially amazing because mm -hmm. women are at the center of it. You know, that's a very important point that you make, and I want to get Susan Venkat and Mr. Ayer to comment on that. This convergence that Ajayta spoke of, it's not just public-private partnership. I mean, that has existed. It's worked successfully, not so successfully in many areas. But this way of looking at these challenges as market opportunities and then involving the private sector, making it economically viable and lucrative for them to look at this as an opportunity, are we engaging in that conversation? Is that conversation happening at this point in time? Paramayar, let me start by asking you. No, I think it really is. If you look at uh, Jan Dhan, there are 400 million bank accounts. Most of them are women. They were totally unbanked. Yeah. So, th yes. you know, that was a very, very powerful step taken where women have bank their own bank accounts in their name. So I think that, that was an important step. Then if you look at the MSME sector, increasingly now, there is a program encouraging women entrepreneurs, women startups. Niti has a women entrepreneurship platform. So I think the, the environment, the enabling environment is there. Obviously, much more needs to be done. Mm. But bringing in the market, as you mentioned, now a cola uh, toilet might be a little above <laughs> anyone's pay grade. Yes, that was like, yes, that was like a that was funny, <laughs> was more like a funny example. Oh. I would rather it be like a local Indian brand. Let's yeah. be very clear. Yeah. But you know, I'm just but the but the Rani mysteries of Jharkhand and other places. I'm sure they can make toilets which are cost effective and as good as cola yes. toilets. So I think again, now what's really happening on the ground? Uh, there is an enabling environment, but obviously it's also an attitudinal change. Yes. And, you know, that needs to be brought about. And clearly, you know, from the Red Ford, the Prime Minister, that was one of his opening statements. You know, attitudes need to change. 
and all of us need to play our little part in that. Mm -hmm. Susan, let's address that. Mm -hmm. Attitudinal change, of course, is a significant part of being able to address this challenge, and especially when you have an environment of patriarchy that continues to exist across different aspects of our lives. But as uh, Ms. Ayer pointed out, there are enabling uh, drivers that have been created. It is a much more enabling environment from a policy perspective. What more do you believe needs to be done on a policy perspective? More importantly, what do you think hasn't worked so far that we need to re redress and change? Well, um, I think, you know, as you've said, and, and also you've said also that, you know, India, there are so many amazing things happening at the moment, I think, and the convergence between sort of policy and, and interest of the private sector is enormous. So I think that, um, you know, I think that, again, this issue of change, I think partly that happens when people partner with each other and they learn from each other that they can trust each other. And actually, a really good example of that is we have um, a set of principles called the women, Women's Empowerment Principles that the private sector sign up to, and that includes you know, women in leadership, the policies around um, empowerment, employment, um, and women in the supply chain also opening up supply chains for women's businesses. Um, and actually engaging with businesses, there are so many private sector companies that are wanting help to change. You know, they recognise the business case without a doubt that diversity improves the bottom line and lives for everyone. Um, and um, and so it, it's not even, you know, there's, there are plenty of people to work with now who want to change, I think. So it is about finding where the energy is and being able to capitalise on that and provide support as needed. And that's partly what UN Women does, actually. Um, and on that, you know, just things like the private sector, I mean, I'm... I'm not Indian, and I've only been in India for two years. I was really bowled away by the fact that there's, you know, a requirement in CSR funds, for example, to give money to, to women in the community, and that happens at massive scale across the country. So all of these things, I think, will add up to um, amplify the change that's already occurring. And I think that is occurring at the very top with the Prime Minister from the ramparts of the Red Fort saying, you know, women must lead this change. And that's being wound through the G20 as well. And I think that's quite groundbreaking, actually, for any G20 conversations. Yeah, Shelley? Well, I, I just wanted to really close on something very important because we are going to be ending the Equality Lounge here in Davos, and it was just really important to have this conversation, really leading from here at the World Economic Forum, leading to the G20, which is why I wanted to call it the road to G20. You can see how important this conversation yeah. is and why women, putting women, when you, put, when you add women to any equation, there's a return on equality. It is so important to continue this conversation. There's a lot to talk about on the road to the G20, why we are bringing the Equality Lounge to India for the G20. We've never done it before. It is so incredibly important. We want to thank CNBC. We want to thank you for having this conversation. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Shelley. It, it, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. <laughs>